You all ready for the word today? Now, I had planned on the month of June uh, ministering. It was Father's Day, and uh, obviously we had the Father's Day message on just being a good father. But I had wrote something else, and it never left me. And so last night I was actually preparing to go in a different direction, and it just really never left me. And I, I've been doing this enough now that I know stick with where you led and how he's leading you. And so uh, these are, it were two important messages I wanted to get in in June. And one was just about being a father. And the other one I wanted to talk about was the male leader. Okay? And uh, I believe this will be a real blessing to you today. I keep growing in this subject, obviously, because God is developing me more and more as a leader. Uh, not in the church, but believe it or not, as a husband and a father, which makes me effective in the church. And, uh, and so I want to share some things with you uh, that just I believe will be a great blessing to you. Ladies, really pay attention, especially single ladies. Raise your hand if you're single and you're female in here. Okay, pay attention today, okay? Then if you're married in here today, it's really going to help you know how to pray for, relate to, and deal with the male leader in your home. And if you're just a teenager in here, this is really God's blueprint for your life. This is how he wants you to grow, develop, what he wants you to become as you get older and become a man that he placed you in the earth to be. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. We'll get right into this. I know it's a holiday weekend, so I only get two points. I'm committed to two points today, and then we'll just pick it up, let you all get back to enjoying your families and, and your weekend, okay? Father, we thank you today. We glorify you. We magnify you. Father, at this seven, seventh month mark, I want to give you all the glory for what you've manifested in this young church, in this young congregation. Father, we absolutely know it could not have been done without your grace and your goodness. And so we love you, Father, and appreciate you for that. And as we go forth with your word today, Father, I know that your word is anointed. I'm confident that you've anointed me to deliver this word. And Father, I know they're anointed to receive the word. And so, Father, every burden will be removed today and every yoke will be destroyed because of that anointing. And Father, as always, I'll give you all the glory for all the good that you'll manifest today. In Jesus' name, and everyone that agrees with that prayer, shout it. Amen. Why don't you shake two or three people's hands, whether you're on the balcony, in the balcony, on the floor. Just tell them, God bless you. So good to see you today. Then you can be seated. And while you're taking your seats, if you would, turn with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, and we'll look at the male leader. We'll look at two points today. And then it'll only take me two weeks to get this in. Uh, be a real blessing to you, I believe. Genesis chapter 2, uh, when you get there, say amen. Looking at the male leader, okay? We know that God is intentional. Everything that God does has purpose in it. But when we don't understand what the purpose is, then, you know, I've always been taught and trained that when you don't understand the purpose of something, then abuse is inevitable. Would you all agree with that statement? All right, so if a, a male doesn't understand his purpose, then he'll actually abuse his role as a male, and so on and so forth. And we can really run that principle through a whole lot of things. And so when God uh, really spoke both of their existence, in, uh, spoke both of them into existence in Genesis chapter 1, their spirits, God had purpose for that, so he created them together, and he said, let's create them in our image and after our likeness. And then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we know that the man was formed out of the dust of the ground. But I want to go somewhere today because I'm talking about the male leader. I want to pick the story up in verse 21. We know before that, God gave man responsibility, put him in the garden. He had roles, and all of those things were really strategic on God's part to help man understand why he was in the earth, okay? And then let's pick the story up in Genesis chapter 2, 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs. How many? One of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. One is symbolic of something. When we're talking about a male leader, 
There's really one woman for every man. Amen. Not 25. 25 confuses him and gets him outside of his purpose. Now, I'm not saying there's one specific one, but once he chooses, she is the one. All right. It's getting ready to be a tough group this morning, huh? All right. And so now, every male, I want you to understand that once you make the choice, that choice is for life. That's God's will for your life. One woman for every man. Maybe this will take four weeks. <laughs> so he closed up the flesh and stared there. there uh, Lord God took from the man one of his ribs, made he a woman, verse 22, the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman, and then brought her unto the man. Okay, so he took one rib, made a woman, brought her to the man, and Adam said, verse 23, Adam said, Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. So I want you to understand, Adam is experiencing something called revelation. Adam gets a revelation right at that moment, soon as he sees her, that she is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And understanding is that she was taken out of me to be brought back to me. So Adam is seeing some completeness here. Adam is seeing that what was missing has now been brought back. So we understand that a woman completes a man. Might take six weeks to get this in. All right. All right. So this is revelation to Adam. Can everyone see that? It's a wow moment for him. This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I'm calling her woman, which is just a man with a wound because she was taken out of me. Okay. Notice where she was taken from was his side, which is the rib cage area. How I many know the ribs protect the heart? Oh, Lord. All right. Without that rib cage, the heart is exposed. Now, let me, I promise you all, let me, two, two points today. Number one, point number one, know your role, okay? Males, every male leader, know your role. And remember, God is a God of order. Okay, I've been involved in sports all of my life, coached for eight years. I would be a coach today if I was not pastoring a church. I would be a coach at the collegiate level, no question. That was a dream of mine, definitely was well on my way, had never had a team that was worst record we ever had in eight years was 22 and 6. I had a real passion for that. But I know it's important that when you've got a section of 12 people, Everyone has to know their role in order for the team to be successful, right? And even as a player, you know, you can't have a big six-foot-ten guy grabbing the rebound and dribbling the ball up the court, right? His role is to get the rebound, get the ball to the guard, run the floor, and a good guard will reward the big fella for rebounding, uh, getting the outlet out and then running the floor. A good guard will reward him on the other end. And the guard should understand that his role is to control, manage the team, get people in spots that they need to be in so that they can be successful, right? And if everyone plays their role, then the team can have success. Everyone agree with that? And so every now and then I would have a, a big fella that want to get the rebound and he want to dribble the ball up the court. And, and I'd have to tell him, I said, big fella, don't bite the hand that's going to feed you, man. How many of y'all understand what I mean by that statement? You don't need to bite the hand that's going to feed you. In other words, do your job, let me do my job, and I'll reward you for it. 
Everybody clear on that? All right. Every male leader must know their role. And God did not leave us in the dark about what these roles are. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. When you get there, say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The male leader, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay. Are you there? All right, know your role. Let's look at verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 says, But I would have you to know that the head of every man is what? All right. The head of every man is what? All right. So listen to me, ladies. If he's not following his head, then what are you following? And when you understand what this word means is if he has no respect for authority, which is why males, this is where it all starts. To be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. All right? So I must know who my head is who has authority over me, follow that with everything that I have, and it makes it easy for everything behind me to follow me. All right? Let's back up to understand that principle. In verse 1, Paul said, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also of what? So what Paul was saying is, if I don't respect authority, then don't you respect my authority. Right? So if I'm not submitted, he's not expecting his followers to be submitted. Do you all see how this works? Okay? And so, men, we go at this the wrong way. And this will be so clear to you. We go at this the wrong way. We try to go at this from more of a physical standpoint as opposed to a spiritual standpoint. All right? And so he says here, verse 3, But I would have you to know that the head of every man should be who? And the head of the woman is the what? And the head of Christ is what? Is God. So everything should have a head, right? Every human being should have a head or authority or someone that they're submitted to. Now, by definition, the word head here means master. It means ruler. It means chief. And it means leader. All right? It means master, ruler, chief, and leader. All right? Now, with headship in the spirit realm comes something called equality. All right? Drop down to verse 8. Actually, drop down to verse 11. It says here, Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. And so in the Lord, there's equality, but in life, we have to have order. Is everyone clear on that? So in the Lord, there's equality. In life, there has to be order. Everyone clear with that? All right? So in the Lord, there's equality. There's no big U's, big I's, and little U's, but in, the, in life, we have something called order, okay? So now, Drop, go to Ephesians chapter 5, and let's look at it another way. So males, we have to be submitted, fully submitted, and respect Christ as our authority if we want everything under us to be fully submitted to us and respect us as their authority. Do you all accept that is true? All right, now, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at verse 23 here. The male leader. This is every male's job description, every male's role. Verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body, the deliverer, the preserver, the sustainer, the one that causes the body to be whole. So the understood subject in verse 23 is the husband, right? 
So we can read that this way. The husband is the Savior, right? Just like Christ is the Savior of the church. So the husband is the Savior. His role is to deliver. His role is to preserve. His role is to sustain. His role is to lead. His role is to make whole. Now, Adam Clark's commentary, I, I wrote this down. Listen to this very carefully. Christ exercised authority over the church, and this is how he used that authority. To save, to protect, and deliver so let the husband exercise authority over the wife by protecting, comforting, providing her with every necessary need and comfort in life according to his power and ability. Wow. So then the authority of the headship is really used to serve the people that we're responsible for. Not the people serve us. And literally, listen to this. This is going to help you out so much. The best way to get your woman to serve is by sacrificing to serve her. See, all the ladies want, all the men want, it is not going down like that. Okay, and we're going to walk through some examples of this. Why do we love Christ? Because he first. Who, who did the loving first? Okay. All right, and we did what? We responded to that. All right. Now, let me let the word do all the work today. Drop down to verse 25. Let's look at it another way. The male leader. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And I want you to underline these four words here. Or five, actually. And gave himself for it. And gave himself for it. The Greek word gave here means to surrender, to yield up, and it means self denial. Barnes' commentary, listen to this, defined gave himself for it this way. The meaning here is that the husbands are to imitate the Redeemer in this regard. He must be willing to bear toil and trial that he may promote the happiness and welfare of his wife and family. If a husband has the spirit of self-denial as the Savior had, he will regard no sacrifice too great to provide for the salvation of his family. Now let's talk about this for a moment, okay? Let's look at his sacrifice and let's look at his leadership, all right? So now, just some, some areas that he said about himself. He became poor, Christ Literally, so that we could what? Why? So that we can become? All right. So what the leader said was, I'll go without so that you can have everything. That's a leader. That means everyone else eats, and if it's nothing else, I go hungry. All right, everybody clear? Let's look at some other aspects of this. He took sickness and disease so that we could be what? All right, so then he bore the punishment so that the church didn't have to. So that means any pain, any sacrificing, that needs to be put on the male, not his family. It's a sad day when men will go out and do for themselves before they do for their families. It's a good day when they sacrifice themselves for the benefit of their families. Let's look at it another way. He took eternal death so that we could have what? 
eternal life. So he was willing to die so that we could live. Who wouldn't follow that kind of leadership? You all still with me today? All right, now. He would regard no sacrifice too great to promote the salvation of his family. We live in a society today, folks. It's important that I stay abreast of current events. But my wife will tell you, as soon as the news broke about a child being left in a car, I instantly said something is not right about that. I didn't judge. I didn't do any of that. But my instincts, my, my paternal instincts kicked in and said something is not right about that. I said to my wife, at some point it would have dawned on me, where is my man? We can go on and on and on today. We were watching a story last night on, I believe it was MS, I can't remember which stellar, but it was a pastor who had, well, let's just get on with the message. I think you all get my point, right? We need more male leaders in the earth who are willing to sacrifice for their wife and children, not sacrifice their wife and children. There is a difference. I think I'll say that again. We, we need more male leaders today who are willing to sacrifice for their wife and children and not sacrifice their wife and children. Go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. As I meditated on this last night, I couldn't really believe how strong this language was. But then I understood because God created us for a purpose. I mean, when we're not operating in that purpose, God is very strong about how he handles and how he deals with that. All right? And so now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I want to begin reading. Let's begin reading. Well, let's read verse 6 and 7. Then we'll drop down to verse 11. Are you all there? Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. We're talking about the male leader here. We'll read 6 and 7, then we'll drop down to verse 11. Well, we'll read it all. 6 through 8. Well, I'll see. Let's just start reading at verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which you received of us. For yourselves know how, we ought to, how you ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but we wrought with labor and travail night and day, watch this, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, we, we have the authority to, to take up an offering, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. And the example was that they were willing to work and not accept something for free. All right, watch this now. This will bless you today. Not because we have not power to make ourselves, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. So then people follow what you do, not what you say. Right? So, so the days of just, just do what I said, oh, I mean, oh, that, that does not work. Don't worry about it. You just do what I told you to do. That, that no longer works. What people do is what they see you do. For, every, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. No. 
No work. No food. Yeah, every head bowed, every eye closed in prayer. Say that with me. No work, no food. All right, I'm going somewhere with that today because there are situations, there's balance to this, right? Okay, let's keep going. I'll get to that. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now, it's something when you get a male out gossiping. I'm telling you, for me, just as a man, it's nothing worse than a guy out spreading stuff. Especially if he's not working. <laughs> he can figure out what's wrong with everybody else. Can't figure out what's wrong with himself. I think I'll take eight weeks to minister this sin. <laughs> now, verse 12, them that are such, we command and exhort. Then it, I, I had to read this several times. By our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Now, I looked up these words because I wanted to make sure I understood fully what they meant. The word withdraw means to disassociate yourself and abstain from. Walketh means this individual walks at large, lives like this, and is occupied with not working and gossiping. Disorderly means irregularly. When Paul talked about tradition here, he was talking about ordinance or the Jewish law, really is what he was referring to. And how many know Jews are very hard-working people? Would you all agree with that? So much so, when I studied this out a little further, when they find someone not working, a group of elders will go and get the individual and what they believe they have to do is re-instruct him because something has gotten off in his thinking when he no longer wants to work to provide for himself and his family. Isn't that interesting? I mean, no, we would, man, we would spend months just visiting people because The word busybodies here, the Greek here means doing everything they should not. But this was interesting. Meddlers in other people's business. Adam Clark's commentary said, the curse of every neighborhood where they live and a pest to society. I want you to listen to me. These are not just grown men who ended up this way. These were little boys who were allowed to be that way and then grew up to be men that that's all they knew. I'm preaching better than you all saying amen. So listen to me, fathers. At roughly around the age of 12, that boy needs to start working and earning everything that he gets. From taking out the trash to keeping his room clean. Hello, somebody to getting good grades, to learning how to mow that lawn, to learning how to edge that lawn. Come on, somebody. And he needs to be rewarded with pay so that he understands a work reward mentality versus a everyone owes me something mentality just because I'm a man. I'm taking 16 weeks on this series. God Almighty is the author, the creator, and the originator of the concept of family. 
So God has a divine order, and he's given divine instructions for every family member, in particular the male leader. Because the male leader is the foundation for how everything else will go. I wrote this down. Listen to this. Challenges begin in our society and in our families when there is either ignorance of proper roles or refusal to submit to God's ordained order. So then we must learn who's who in the home and in our society. Society is utterly confused about order in the home and must only look to God for this answer. Now, on what day was July 4th? What day was that? Friday. On Friday, we went to Lenox Mall. We did not know it was a fireworks concert. We did not know. My daughter wanted some shoes, Googled them, found out they were at Lenox Mall. We just went to Lenox Mall to pick these shoes up and wow, we didn't realize the whole city of Atlanta would be at Lenox Mall on this day. And so we live, we live in West Cobb, right? We're actually getting ready to move to Gwinnett County. And so we live in different places. And so when you don't go into the city, you forget about really what's going on in the city. And let me tell you something. I saw more boys who did not know who they were. It grieved me. So much so, stand up for a moment. This is what my daughter did. Stand on that side. She was walking. I was kind of like on the side. We had them two in the middle. And because, I mean, it, it was just, I mean, it was public displays of confusion. And that's all I'll say. And I'm being very nice about that. So, so much so now, they've gone from sagging to, to my butt is showing. And see, all it was, there was no father there to kick him in his butt. Because that's all he would have gotten in my home was a size 11 imprint. But it's gone to this level now. Where it's, it's no longer my underwear. It's I'm walking with my actual butt showing. Now, I don't know about you, but that, that's just nasty. That's poor hygiene. Anyway, I'm getting off. So my daughter, we're walking, and we're watching all of this. And I'm like, wow, this is the most confusion I've ever seen. And it wasn't just males. It was males and females. So it's no longer any more shame in this. I saw more tattoos on women's chests. It grieved me. We've got a lot of work to do. See, while we're sitting in here, we got, we got to get out there. We're walking, and my daughter just grabs me. She says, Daddy, what is all of this? <laughs> Thank you. And I knew what she meant. See, they go to Christian schools. They don't see this like this. And so I know if I was shocked, I grew up in urban America, so I've seen aspects of this, not at this level, but they, they're never exposed to it. She never let me go the entire time we were walking around. And how many of y'all know I, I really felt good that she wanted to be that close to me? But folks, this is the level of confusion we live in today. I'm talking, if I had to put a percentage on that, I don't know if I saw 20% straight people. I don't know if I saw that. I'm going high. That's the level. And most of these were concentrated with young people. So much so, this one group was a gang. But it was a... And I said, really? Is that what this is now? So, 
So, you know, I can almost imagine, because I grew up in urban and America, I can almost imagine how you get in that. You probably have to get raped in. If you get beat in the other way, you have to get probably raped in that way. That's the level. Okay. Can anyone tell me what's probably missing in all of those kids' lives? A male leader. Do you all understand the significance of what we're talking about today? All right, point number two. A male leader rules the home. Okay, and I'll explain what this means. He rules the home. Okay? Kids cannot do what they want to do. Now, he rules the home. Go back to Genesis chapter 2. This is so serious to me, man. We, I, I don't know how we go at this, but we, we've got to help, man. When's the last time anyone in here been to Lenox Mall on a Friday or Saturday? Raise your hand, Friday or Saturday. Is it like that all the time? Oh, so that wasn't a special day. That didn't have anything to do with the fireworks and the concert. Oh, that's just... Genesis chapter 2. When you get there, say amen. Are you all getting anything out of this today? All right, Genesis chapter 2. Ladies, are you getting anything out of this? All right, do not single ladies... Choose a man who is not submitted to Christ. Period. And I'm not talking about he's working on it. He is. It's so easy to compromise. Today, you don't know what you're getting. Emory did a study on, on HIV. It is. Atlanta, I think, is the second largest city in the United States of America of HIV victims. See, if sex is so good, why is it creating so much harm? Because it's only good within the context of a marriage. And if I was in a real strong, convicted church, man, they would have said, man, that's to say that again, Pastor. Stay right there, Pastor. Stay right there. Stay right there. Not move on, Pastor. Move on. If sex was so good, why is it hurting so many people? It's because that wasn't God's purpose for it. Sex is only good within the context of a marriage. And there's nothing wrong with telling our boys, I make sure, I reiterate this to my son all the time. Keep, I can't say it to you the way I say it to him. But my point is, hold on. There's a time and place for that. And then it's easier when I can look him in his eye and tell him, your daddy didn't sleep with your mother until after we were married. Amen. Makes it easier Amen. to look a daughter in her eye and tell her, you don't give up the cookies without a commitment. And it's not a commitment if he doesn't give you a ring. 
don't understand why we're saying I love you and giving all of that up and he's giving you nothing. Once again, if I was in a real strong convicted church, the support I would get on these kind of statements would be just unreal. I mean, it would just, it would be mind blowing the, the support on truth like that. Only time you don't get that kind of support is when it's not actually being lived. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying when you don't get that kind of support, that's not what's being lived. Where'd I tell you to turn? Turn. You all still glad you came to church today? I'm telling you, this is better than those ribs you had on Friday. And the macaroni and cheese on Saturday, right? I mean, we've got to get order back in the church. Hmm? It's interesting that they said disassociate yourself and abstain from that type of behavior. Don't run with it. We don't judge it, but we don't run with it. See, if all your girlfriends are loose and sexual, see, all my boys drink, hang out, party, all my boys. What does that say about me? <laughs> and you know, most pastors would be scared to talk about this stuff in church because they think the offerings would go down. Man, look here. <sighs> I'm telling you, you teach the truth. It wouldn't matter what the people did. God will send that money from overseas if he had to. Because he wants the truth to get out. He doesn't want a pastor that can be bought by the people. Genesis chapter 2. Rule the home. We'll close with this point. Genesis chapter 2, rule the home. Genesis 2, 7, the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He takes that man, places him in the garden of Eden eastward, and pick up at verse 15, and the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden, and he put him in there for this purpose, to dress it and to what? Okay, so Adam was placed in the garden to dress and to keep it. So a male leader's role then can be summed up this way. He is to lead, he is to provide, and he is to protect. He is to lead, he is to provide, and he is to protect. Okay, go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Lead, provide, and protect. Now, when you all think about protection, sure, we have an enemy, and his name is Satan. But there are greater enemies that Satan uses that we need to protect our households and our families from. And I'll talk to you about those in a moment. Let's get through this. Uh, second, First Timothy chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right. First Timothy chapter 3 says, this is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop here. That means overseer or leader is what that word means. He desireth a good work. But notice he has to desire that, doesn't he? Then it goes on to say it's interesting that the first thing he says, and I want to spend some time here. Let me, let me pull this up. I want to get to this point here. This was revelation to me. It was something that I knew. I understood in principle. This drove it home for me a little bit further. I never looked at it like this. The Lord said, back up. What was the first thing I said about the leader? And I said, okay, let me dig into this a little further. Watch this now. 1 Timothy chapter 3. A bishop then must be what? Okay, or a leader or an overseer must be what? 
that word blameless there is very important for us to understand. The leader then must be blameless. How far do I want to go with this? All right, the Greek word here literally means to not be laid hold of. All right, to not be laid hold of. This has to do with proven character, conduct, watch this now, which is above reproach in his marital life, family life, his social life, his civil life, and his business life. No leader, listen to this should have a justifiable charge of immorality or misconduct against him. The, the key word there is justifiable. So a true leader, because how I many you know when you're a leader and you're in a spotlight, you're on a big stage, people are going to accuse you of all kind of stuff. But you must live your life where it's, they can't substantiate that. They can't justify that. They can say it, but it cannot be proven anywhere. All right, and so if you think about it, and this made me reflect on our situation. The way that situation was handled, it was done in a way to make our, my character look a certain way. There's no question about that. That was done in a way to make my character look a certain way. But what thousands of people said was, we've never seen him live like that. What was just done and what we've seen him live is not consistent. Right? But then that leader has a responsibility and come up and say and be accountable that it was not immorality and there was no financial mismanagement. A leader under accusation has to be able to stand up and tell the truth that that did not happen unquestionably and it cannot be substantiated. Not running high and hope that the situation goes away or sweep it under a rug or be in denial when you are under public accusation. I'm preaching better than you all saying amen. All right? Which means men in a home, we should live our lives in a way where if even questioned, that's nothing to talk about. Take my phone. Take my iPad. Hello, somebody. Come on, take the bank records. Let's go on the website. Anything you, we should live our lives like an open book. We should not hide our phones, hide our iPads. This is work-related. I can't give you the passcode to that. Because what business do you have that your wife cannot be a part of? I'm talking about the male leader. The first thing that God says is he has to be blameless. Which is why I have no problem on the radio, on television. I will say you can't find a woman nowhere that will tell you I behaved myself inappropriately with her. Nowhere. I'll get on the Katie Bo show, President Barack Obama can interview me, it wouldn't matter. Because if one did rise up, there'll be no trail between me and that woman nowhere. I hear the lady saying amen. I'm taking 20 weeks to get into this series. Because I don't hear enough men out there saying Amen. We got to get out of this slick willy mentality. Amen. Trying to trick everybody. Amen. Fool everybody. I'm done for the day. Because it's too much here. And I promised you. Let me tell you, it's so much in this because I want to take my time. Amen. It'll still be two weeks. I'm going to come back to it. But we're going to deal with the male leader. Amen. 
you'll never find a male leader hiding. You always see him out front. Whenever he's questioned, he's the first one to let you know. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. And he does not run from his responsibility. He actually runs to it. 25 weeks. Until I get a stronger amen from the men in here. Sending all the ladies home today and you stay. I'm just going to unplug right here. I want to respect our volunteers. A long weekend for them. I'll be back. Y'all get anything out of this today? Yeah. Never saw that like that before. First thing he said about that leader, it's got to be blameless. I put out a post a couple of ago. I want to challenge the men in here. If you were to give your cell phone to your significant other, your spouse, for one day, would you still be in a relationship the next day? Some of these fellas in here like, hey, man, what's it? Hey, what a, hey, hey, man, hey, hey, I'm a grown man, man, hey, man, you know, how I live my life, man, well, hey, man. You can almost feel the tension rising in here a little bit, like, that's personal, you know what I mean? You know, you don't get nobody in my phone, man, what are you talking about, man? But, but think about that for a minute. Can they get your laptop? Go through your history right now. without you deleting it. <laughs> Can they come on the job All right. when you're not there <laughs> and talk to people? Right. See, real character is not who you are when you're with your family. <laughs> Real character is who you are when you're not with your family. That's the leader that you really are. Forty weeks. Cause I, 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 I'm not getting no male support out there. They're just staring at me right now. Something to think about, though, isn't it? I just gave my cell phone for one day, unlocked, which means she can see every text, everything that comes through there. That's blameless. Here's my laptop. Here's my iPad. You'd be surprised how many people have two lives. and can perfectly play both worlds, roles, which is schizophrenic. One life, come on, hey baby, hey kids. <laughs> Story we were watching last night, pastor had two lives. That's how I knew I was, I, said, I know Lord. Lord was dealing with me that Nobody talks about this stuff in church anymore. Which is why the church looks just like the world. Can't really tell much difference. And I think that's why God is raising us up in these last days.
because I don't have a price tag. I won't be bought, and I'm not preaching for popularity. I'm preaching for results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 60 weeks. <laughs> Let me hear every male in here say. Amen. One more time. Let me hear every male in here say. Amen. We've got a lot of work to do, folks. If you look at what God's calling us to do, when we, especially when we get into the community economic development side and the youth sports side, we've got to get them while they're young. We've got to really be a light in the community. I don't know if I've ever been anywhere in my life where maybe 20% of the people I saw looked normal. It just blew me away, man. Like, wow, I don't get out like that, you understand? We kind of stay in our areas, but these shoes were only at Lenox Mall. Instantly, while walking around, Jennifer, I said, man, we need a church in Lenox Mall. Because <laughs> I know kids, I'm a former youth pastor, they'll come here to truth. It's just nobody's telling them the truth. Somebody's telling them that, so they're conforming to that. The moment they hear something different, man, they'll instantly make the adjustment and then not only just hear something different but you're going to love on them and show them how to do it and take them places and invest in them man educate them hello somebody you just got a lot of work to do let's lift our hands let's just reverence the father for a moment